Today we're going to be talking about how to name compounds, and specifically monatomic compounds. Um, these consist of metals and nonmetals together in an ionic compound, and they're all called salts. And I know that when I say salt, we think of table salt or sodium chloride. But any metal combined with a nonmetal in a monatomic compound is called a salt. So let's get going on some nomenclature. In monatomic compounds, there are metals and nonmetals. The metals form positive ions called cations, and the nonmetals form negative ions called anions, and together they make an ionic compound. Here we have the definition and nomenclature. When we say nomenclature, we're talking about how do we put a name on it. So a monatomic means that it's consisting of one metal and one nonmetal. That's where the mono comes in because it's one and one. The nomenclature or the naming is as such. The cation is written first and you just write the normal name of the element. So if it says magnesium, then it's magnesium. If it has a symbol for calcium, then it's calcium. And the second part is the anion. The anion is written second with the ending of the element changed to ide. So instead of chlorine, it's chloride. Instead of oxygen, it's oxide. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples. Here we have the sodium ion, which is Na+, plus, plus the chlorine ion, Cl-, minus, yielding NaCl, or table salt. So sodium ion, Na+, plus, that's our cation. And when we write these and we name them, the cation's name stays the same. So sodium ion just stays as sodium when we write this. The chlorine, however, is your anion. So remember that the ending gets changed to ide. So chlorine gets changed to chloride. And together, it's written as sodium chloride. So let's do a few more. Take a look at A, C-A-O. And as you're trying to solve these, think, what does the CA stand for, what is its charge, and what does the O stand for, and what is its charge? So pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. Okay, you think you got it? Well, the CA stands for calcium, and calcium is a metal, and so we know that that's our cation, so the name calcium stays the same. The O stands for oxygen, and since oxygen is written second, and we know that oxygen is a nonmetal, then we need to change the ending to ide. So oxygen becomes oxide. So altogether, it's calcium oxide. Let's look at another one. Here's MgCl2. So think, what does Mg stand for, and what is its charge, and what does Cl stand for, and what is its charge? So pause the video and write, see if you can write this one down on your own. Okay, think you got it? Well, let's take a look. Mg stands for magnesium, and we know that magnesium is written first, and it's a cation, so the name stays the same. It's still written as magnesium. But chlorine is written second, and it's our anion. And whenever we have the anion, we need to change the ending to ide. So chlorine becomes chloride. So together, it's magnesium chloride. And here's one more example for you. BAF2. So pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. Okay, you think you got it? The answer here is barium fluoride because barium, B-A, is your cation and it's written first and so the name stays the same, barium. And fluorine is written second and it's your anion and it's a negative charge so we have to change the ending to ide so fluorine becomes fluoride. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Here's our first learning check. Which of the following is the correct name for ALBR3? Okay, think. What does AL stand for and what does BR stand for? Which one's the cation, which one's the anion, and how are we gonna name this? So read through the options and see if you can figure this one out. Okay, do you have an answer? All right, the correct answer here is B, aluminum bromide, okay? A is incorrect because bromine did not change to bromide. C is incorrect because we do not change the cation's name. And D is incorrect because both the cation and the anion here is changed when only the anion is supposed to be. So 
Aluminum bromide is the correct name for AlBr3. We also need to be able to find the formula if we're given the name. So let's do a few examples. Take a look at A, lithium sulfide. So we need to find what formula this is going to be. So lithium is your cation because the cation is always written first. So the symbol for lithium is Li. Now it forms a positive one cation because lithium is in group 1A and it has one valence electron that it loses. Sulfide the root of that is sulfur, and so the symbol for sulfur is a capital S. And we know that sulfur is in group 6A, and it needs two more electrons to have a complete electron shell. So it will form a two minus anion. So together we have lithium with a plus one and sulfur with a two minus. So we need two lithiums for every one sulfur for it to be a balanced neutral compound. So our formula is Li2S. Let's take a look at another one. Here's B, potassium phosphide. Pause the video and see if you can solve this one. Remember, think about your charges for each one before solving for the compound. Do you have an answer? Okay, let's go over it. Potassium symbol is K, and it forms a plus one ion because it is in group 1A, and it gives away that one valence electrons. Phosphide, the root element, is phosphorus, and phosphorus is in group 5A. So in order for phosphorus to have a complete electron shell, it needs to gain three electrons. So phosphorus will form a three minus anion. So together we have potassium with a plus one, and phosphorus with a three minus. So we're gonna need three potassiums for every one phosphorus to form a neutral compound. So we've got K3P, that is our compound formula. Now try C, barium fluoride. Pause the video and see if you can solve it. Okay, good. Hopefully you noticed it's the same example as before. Okay, so barium is in group 2A and it will form a two plus cation. Fluoride, the root element is fluorine and fluorine is in group 7A, so it only needs one more valence electron to have a complete outer shell. So it will form a one minus anion. So together we have barium with a two plus and fluorine with a minus one. So for every one barium, we need two fluorides. So together, it's BAF2. All right, learn and check number two. Which of the following is the incorrect pair? So you're looking for the one that the name does not match the formula or the name or the formula is written incorrectly. So pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Okay, did you make a choice? The answer here is C, beryllium oxide Be2O. The reason why this is incorrect, it's not because the name is written wrong, but it's because of the formula. Be beryllium is in group 2A and forms a two plus ion. Oxygen is in group 6A and forms a two minus ion. So when we crisscross those charges, we get Be2O2. Well, here's the thing, they have the same charge, and so they reduce to BeO. So the correct formula for beryllium oxide would be BeO. It's joke time. Hey bro, can I borrow your electron? Never gives the electron back. Do you get it? Because it's oxygen, and oxygen needs two more for a complete electron shell, and so he won't give it back because he takes it to form an anion? Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Have a great day.